to the graduating students this evening, to the chairman of the board, to the board of trustees, to the president, to the faculty, my colleagues, to Sister Sharon, Bishop, to all those who made this evening possible by your support for these students. I'd like to share with you a, a journey that I've been on for the past year. And I'm marking a, a year point on this. And it's a story that goes, if you will, from Pentecost to Pentecost, a feast that we celebrate in three days. It's a story about grief and friendship and love and discovery and newfound hope. On May 19th, I received an email that my best friend was found dead in his office at 46 years of age, a Jesuit of enormous promise, whom I had hooded in 2010 in a ceremony like this evening. He was very athletic, really robust. He was from Hong Kong, Yu Sing Lucas Chan. He was a person who exercised every morning, never ate meat, didn't drink except for a Guinness every now and then. He was very kind and gentle. He was my better side in our friendship. He had a lot of gentleness and a lot of hospitality. And he had some great, great Confucian virtues of respect and kindness and mutual responsibility. And he had a heart problem, apparently, even though he saw a cardiologist in Hong Kong and in Boston, where he studied, and in Marquette, where he had taught. But still, he ended up dying at 46, right after having done a workout. And I found the news by an email. I had been really struck by this because Lucas, as I called him, he and I were to be going to India together uh, last summer. We were going to be team teaching at Dharmaram School of Theology in Bangalore, a place that I had gone for four different times to teach. He was also going to host the first Asian regional conference that John Palakowski referred to of this organization that I'm the founder of, of Catholic Theological Ethics. So here my best friend and I were going to be teaching together, finally colleagues, only six years after he had received his doctorate and that he was going to be hosting a conference for 100 Asians, first time, all across Asia, celebrating what it means to be a theological ethicist. He had found the lone moralist in Cambodia. He had found the two moralists in Malaysia. He found the three in Japan. And he found each of them and sustained them and developed them to be able to come to this conference in Bangalore. And now, he was not going to be hosting it because he had died. And I'm facing all this, and I'm thinking of something else, that in three days, it's Pentecost. May 19th last year was three days before Pentecost. This year, it's after Pentecost. And I was thinking, how do I preach on Pentecost, the birth of the church, the presence and the descent of the spirit, when I am something that I can't even define because I've never known grief like this. Now, I've lost my parents, I lost my brother, I lost my niece. It's not that grief was unfamiliar. But he and I had done so much together and there was so much promise in the way we worked with one another and so much hope. And now I'm going to preach at Pentecost. And I had to dig down deep in myself to figure out what on earth I could say, and I decided to go to the upper room. What were they doing in the upper room on Pentecost? What were they doing there? Were they just sitting there waiting for the Spirit to come? Oh, I hear the Holy Spirit is coming today. Let's go to the upper room <laughs> and wait for the Spirit to descend on us, and we'll go, whoa, it's Pentecost. What were they doing in the upper room there? They were grieving. Only 40 days before, the person they most loved was put to a sudden death. It was a catastrophic moment in their lives. It was nothing but catastrophe. 
It was nothing but sudden. They had no idea what was happening. And they had gathered there in that upper room to share the grief that they had with one another. And they had had these resurrection appearances too that were consoling, that gave them some sense of hope. But they still were consoling one another in their grief. And they began to share with one another for those 40 days how much they had been loved by this one, this one that they missed. They were not talking about all the great things he had done. They were talking instead about the fact that they had been so loved by him. And they wanted to know that if he loved so much, did his life matter? Did his life matter? And it was in that sharing for those 40 days that the disciples with Mary and others are gathered together in that grief that they discovered such love that the Spirit found her place in their midst. The descent of the Spirit comes to people who in their grief discover love. And in that love, they share it with one another and they come to a new place a place by which they are led by the Spirit out of the room to be able to do the work that they needed to do. For me, that's what happened. For me, I ended up having to go to Marquette a few days later to fly there as people all around the world did. There were people from the Philippines, there were people from San Francisco, people from New York, people from Italy, people from Germany his brother and sister from Hong Kong flying to, to uh, Marquette to be there to, for his funeral. And then I and another Jesuit accompanied his brother and sister and his ashes and took him to Hong Kong where we had a memorial mass with his parents and his bishop and his members of his province, all struck dumbfounded by this death. But in that grief, we shared in those liturgies that his life mattered, that he was touched by the same one who sent the Spirit as his life was discovered, as his love was felt, and as the ability to know that his life had mattered enough for them to move on. And then I had to go to Pune and to Bangalore, and I had to teach the courses we were to team teach, and I decided I would only teach the books that he wrote and it was great. He would have preferred it that way. <laughs> he was so tired of hearing my voice that I was teaching him. I'm sure he found really wonderful. But I taught only his, but he had extensive writings. He had two books and he had 10 articles. And I just taught those so that he would be known there because I thought if I taught what I teach, they'll remember that. But if I teach what Lucas Chan, they'll remember that. And that's what I wanted to happen. And so it happened. And this entire year has been a year of a journey, a journey that I discovered in loss, love. You're celebrating tonight gain, success, achievement, and in that there's great love. Look at this room. Look at the way they stood up and applauded. Look at the way people with tenderness are remembering you. Where there's success, there is love. But where there's loss, there's love as well. And we live in a world in which loss and grief are so awkward, we don't know what to do with it. But for us to discover, perhaps through Pentecost, perhaps through the Spirit herself, this capacity that we have to live through grief, to allow grief to teach us the cycles of love, to allow us to realize that whether it's gain or loss, we can discover love. So that's my prayer for you. Three days from now, it's Pentecost. Think of what they were doing in the upper room. They were telling stories of love, of how they had been loved, of how they had been touched by this one. That how that he was no longer there and that they had an experience of sudden separation and they found it so compelling. And yet, the conviction of love allowed them to leave the room, just as he 
had left the tomb. I pray for you that your Pentecost may be a moment of being led by the Spirit, having encountered love and shared it with one another.